And when our clear verses are recited to them, those who do not hope for their meeting with us say, Bring us a Quran other than this, or change it. Say, O Muhammad, it is not for me to change it of my own accord. I only follow that which is revealed to me. Indeed, I fear, if I were to disobey my Lord, the torment of the great day, the day of resurrection. Say, O Muhammad, if Allah had willed, I would not have recited it to you, nor would he have made it known to you. Indeed, I have stayed amongst you a lifetime before this. Have you then no sense? God promised that he would raise up prophets from Abraham's two sons, and from Isaac the biblical prophets came. But which prophet came from Ishmael's line other than Muhammad, peace be upon him? Yet many insult him, which is an awful shame. People have abandoned religion, uninformed that God sent messengers like Muhammad to guide them to his plan. As Islamophobia is trendy in the media, now more than ever, we need to find out about the final prophet sent to man. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born in Mecca, in ancient Arabia, from Prophet Ishmael's clan. He became orphaned at eight, so his uncle Abu Talib raised him until he grew into a man. As a youth, he grew up as a humble shepherd, but later on became a trader, selling goods far and wide. A rich businesswoman called Khadija was so impressed by his honesty, she requested to become his bride. Even before his prophethood, pagans called him the Trusted or Al-Amin, and knew he was noble and chaste. Respecting his Qureshi bloodline, he solved their disputes, like restoring the black stone back into its place. Pagans used to take care of pilgrims who visited Mecca, but worshipped with polytheism in their heart. The once holy Kaaba that Abraham had built was now defiled by idols, like statues of Uzza and Lat. The pagans had evil customs. They buried baby girls alive, were drunken fornicators and cruel to slaves. Muhammad, peace be upon him, hated this evil and would seek secluded areas far away to meditate in peace and pray in caves. When he was aged 40, Angel Gabriel startled him at Mount Nur's Hira cave and ordered him to read. He said he was unlettered, but Gabriel squeezed him to repeat what he heard of the Qur'an's recital upon his lead. He recited, Read, in the name of your Lord, who has created everything, he has created man from a congealed clot. Read, and your Lord is the most generous, who has taught by the pen, he has taught man that which he knew not. He went home shaking, in a cold sweat, and his wife Khadija covered him in a blanket as he was in shock and scared. She immediately comforted him and believed him, saying Allah would help him as he was truthful, pious and cared. Khadija took him to her learned Christian cousin, Waraka bin Nawfal, who used to write the Bible in Hebrew. He confirmed that Angel Gabriel was relaying God's message and would support him as the hostility grew. Sadly, blind Waraka died a few days later and the Prophet's true dreams and revelation came to a complete stop. But Angel Gabriel appeared confirming his prophethood and prevented him from throwing himself off a mountain top. He saw Gabriel in his true form and began calling to Allah's oneness or Tawheed and warned against evil and pride. With a huge expectation on his shoulders, as the last of Allah's prophets, he was sent to guide people worldwide. 
For three years, the number of Muslims gradually grew, but they met in small groups preaching in subdued fashion. Persecuted family, the poor, and slaves were the first to convert until the message was spread in heraldic passion. Once the Prophet preached to the pagans from a hilltop, rebuking, they said making their gods into one was insane. Perturbed, they tried to entice him with wealth and kingship, but he turned them down, knowing Islam would reign. As Muslims grew in number, so did pagan hostilities. From taunts to throwing filth, it escalated to murderous harm. The Prophet sent a hundred to Ethiopia, where the Christian king welcomed them and willingly converted to Islam. King Negus was approached by pagan envoys, who tried convincing him to arrest the Muslims as dangerous and bad. But when he heard Quranic verses praising Jesus and Mary, peace be upon them both, he let them go and cried with true faith joyfully glad. People loved being around the Prophet, peace be upon him. He always helped orphans and the poor, being kind to both young and old. He received revelation directly from Allah, and even enemies embraced Islam who were once hardened and bold. After ten years of calling to the worship of Allah, with grief his uncle died, followed by Khadija, his loving wife. In Taif, the pagan stoned him until his sandals dripped with blood, but he patiently endured the hard tests of life. Miraculously, all in a day, Gabriel sped him to Jerusalem and on the pony-sized Burak to heaven he was taken alive. He led all the prophets in prayer and spoke to Allah beyond veils of light who gave him the daily prayers, all five. Pagans ridiculed his journey, but his close friend Abu Bakr didn't doubt him, telling them Muhammad, peace be upon him, never lied. He blessed the Prophet's marriage to his daughter Aisha, who wisely retained marital etiquette up until he died. The Prophet, peace be upon him, married Aisha after her menses, with Allah and her parents' permission, and nobody objected at all. People wed at puberty then, as lifespans were short. Even Mary delivered Jesus aged 13, so it is evil to name call. Although he performed many miracles like multiplying food for the hungry and causing the rain to fall or cease, his real miracle was delivering the actual speech of God, the glorious Quran, over 23 years as a book in one piece. The pagans asked the Prophet, peace be upon him, to perform an amazing miracle once and for all, to turn them into believers too. But even though they had asked for it, they said it was magic and turned away even after he split the moon in two. When Muhammad's son Ibrahim, born from Maria the Coptic, died, a total eclipse occurred and the sky turned dark. Some said it was due to God being sad, but the Prophet stopped them, saying births or deaths eclipses do not mark. He used to sew his own clothes, allow his grandsons to slide down his back while in prayer and slept on the floor. His smile was beautiful. He was good to non-Muslim neighbors and never amassed wealth, but gave it all to the poor. As pilgrims visiting Mecca began learning all about Allah's way, the pagans became more jealous and meaner. They conspired to murder the Prophet and he told the Muslims to leave Mecca and make migration or Hijra to Medina. The Prophet and Abu Bakr escaped and rested in Thor cave where Allah miraculously hid them in plain sight. Meanwhile the pagans gathered to slay the Prophet but found Ali 
lying in his place and slinked off into the night. Medina welcomed the Muslims and the Prophet paired the newly arrived to resident families as fosters taken. A mosque was built for them to pray in and seeing the thriving Islamic community left the spiteful pagans shaken. Envious pagans joined hypocrite Muslims and Jews and formed an army trying to end Allah's religion or deen. But it backfired badly when just 300 Muslims defeated over a thousand of them at Badr, helped by angels unseen. After more battles and severe tests, as at Mount Uhud, where the Prophet, peace be upon him, was nearly killed and suffered harm, Allah gave the Muslims victory, and as they removed tyranny and evil, whole tribes embraced the beauty of Islam. Meanwhile, the pagan Meccans broke their truce with the Muslims, so to Mecca, the Prophet finally went back. He destroyed all 360 idols that polluted the Kaaba, and Islam became dominant in peace, not by war or attack. The Prophet sent letters of invite to the world's rulers, like Khosros of Persia and Heraclius Caesar of Rome, calling them to Islam as Allah's last Prophet the whole world was now unnoticed to establish Islam at home. Finally, he performed Hajj with thousands at Arafah, then advised the Muslims in his farewell sermon how to be. He pointed skyward, saying, O oh Allah, bear witness, after asking all if he had conveyed Allah's message clearly. Then Allah revealed, this day have I perfected your religion for you, as the final verse of the Qur'an. It went on to say, And completed my favor upon you, and have chosen for you as your religion, Islam. He advised us all, Verily, if you follow the Qur'an and my sunnah, or methodology, you will never be led astray. Even when Jesus, or Isa, returns, he will honor this pledge, and for the dissenters, that will be an awful day. The Prophet, peace be upon him, rapidly became ill after that, with fever and pain, but continued advising and prayers he tried to lead. Angel Gabriel made him recite the Quran twice that Ramadan, and he discharged his duties, doing many a good deed. The Prophet, peace be upon him, stayed in Aisha's apartment before his demise and said, O oh Allah, forgive me and have mercy upon me. The last words he uttered were, Join me to the most exalted companionship on high. In dignity, he, peace be upon him, died aged 63. The whole world needs to know about the Prophet without prejudice, learn about him, and emulate his monotheistic way. For when all are silenced before God, except Muhammad, peace be upon him, on the last day, you would wish that on your behalf he would pray. <laughs>